Um, so I want to talk for a minute about a, a potential answer to the question that Yancey posed at the beginning, which is how do we balance out an asymmetric world? And how do we try to figure out some solutions to the problems that we see all around us growing in just astronomical proportions? This is our team in UNICEF. I co-lead UNICEF Ventures, which is a small team with a small venture fund inside of a huge bureaucracy. So this is the UNICEF that you may know. It's an old organization and it's Byzantine and scary. Uh, our team mostly comes from the worlds of startups, of design and private sector, and we think about things very differently uh, than an old bureaucracy, which is important because the problems that we're facing today need a different type of thought. So UNICEF's small budget globally in the, over the next three years compared to China's enormous budget spent just on Africa shows you how much we need to leverage new types of tools and new types of vehicles to solve the problems that we see all around us. So for example, we know that over the next 15 to 20 years, more than 70% of people are going to be living in urban centers, and we're totally unprepared for that. And Cities are unprepared for that. The infrastructure doesn't work right, and it doesn't support the poorest people. It just puts them into slums or, or areas where they can't get access to services. We also know that right now there are 50 million kids who are on the move because of violence. That's a number that nobody in this room, I don't think, can conceptualize easily. Uh, but it also means that the world has tipped, and that number, the number of refugees traveling through Europe in Central Africa or on boats, is not going to go down. We've also destroyed our planet, right? This is all the depressing stuff. The funny stuff happens later, promise. Uh, but we've, we've broken things, and the world is really tipped. And the one thing that I'd like people to come away from this talk with is that there is a solution, and I think the solution is not found in New York or in San Francisco. It's found in the places that have the biggest problems. So in a country like Malawi, which in 20 years is going to have 20 million kids under 20 years old, that's the type of place that if we focus on sorting things out and solving problems, we can then scale those solutions globally. And it sounds counterintuitive, but we live in a world that's now more connected than ever. And uh, something like Ebola or Zika has shown us how interconnected we all are, even if we don't want to be. Which means that, like a fractal, if we can sort out a problem in the place that it's most difficult to do, that solution can then be easily scaled elsewhere. So our fund is tiny, it's $10 million, it's the first venture vehicle inside of the United Nations, and it allows us to make small bets into open source technology, and the return to the LPs is a return that is profitable. It gives them intellectual property that's open source that can help make their businesses better. So a few things we've invested in are things like you report, which allows us to connect young people to government in real time and give them an actual voice and then give them data back that can let them live their lives better. And that's a pretty cool open source platform to have 100,000 users in Liberia or 1.6 million in Nigeria. Similarly, systems like MTRAC have allowed us to take in Uganda a problem like lack of supplies in health centers, which five years ago left 70% of people in a health center not able to get access to vital medicines and reduced that to 15% in four years using an SMS. Simple, scalable. It also allowed us to take things like birth registration. So in Uganda in 2009, 30% of people had a birth registration or a birth certificate. By using something so simple, a mobile phone and SMS as a transaction layer, we were able to increase that nationally to almost 70%. So these are open source solutions that can affect everybody. And the trick is, can we take problems that affect a billion people and industries that are going to be $100 billion that didn't exist 10 years ago and connect them in a way that we can create that gravity pull for these ideas so we can apply them everywhere? I think the answer is yes. So here's the funny stuff, or at least the happy stuff. Um, this is Malawi, and this is a drone flying dried blood samples from a health clinic in Malawi to a place where they can get tested for HIV. Type of infrastructure that exists in a lot of places in East Africa is so distressed that it will never be at the, sp at the place that it is in the US. But things like drones or things like blockchain can start to build up an infrastructure that just was inconceivable. This is my great grandmother's refugee card from the 1940s. A refugee card for a refugee in Europe today looks pretty much the same, and that's insane. That just doesn't make any sense when we have solutions that can fix it. So in Uganda, where you're registering all of these kids at birth and you get 70% birth registration, this is still the way that the government displays that information, but this is how DeepMind displays whatever the hell it wants when you ask it to like make a face and it draws something super creepy. We know that we have solutions to fix the problem of two billion unbanked people. If you're a woman and you're unbanked, you're absolutely unable to access the vital services that you need to give your child an equal and fair chance in life. But those technologies exist, and M-Pesa in Kenya holds 70% of the liquidity in that country. So these are incredible private sector businesses. Up on the top left is a small necklace that uses near-field communication to store a baby's health records on it so that baby can have its immunization records for the whole first five years of life, and that costs $7, and that's something we invested in through the fund. These types of solutions are easy, and they're there, and they allow us to bind together a world which seems to be spinning out of control. So 80-plus percent of people uh, in the world live in this gray area, and that's where you've got about a quarter of the world's wealth. And the proposition of this talk, and the thing I'd like you to take away, is that if we can bind together the gray and the green world using private sector approaches and the way that development works with government, we can actually change some of these issues and, and move the ticker forward. Thank you very much. Thank you.